right, hello everybody. It's not Gandalf, it's Gandalfus. This is Travis. You're at Tipo's Corner. Part of a new series, Travis plays the pre-maids. We've got a number of pre-made decks wizards made for us. With the set rotations to get us used to the different cards. This is probably an equipment deck we're facing. Which we might be weak against. There's a lot of green in here, so we'll see what happens. Fencing Ace followed by Luminaric Aspirant is a very good combination. And that alone can kind of kill us, right? So let's hope we can't stand to have them beef him up any bigger than he already is. So we're taking four more points next turn, no matter what. We didn't have two removal spells. Another fencing ace. Lovely cheap spells. Ugh, four four after all. I need removal. Or we're gonna die. That is not removal. You gave me enough to chump block once. Thank you very much. Well, I can chump block twice because I've got Kaza. Charm Stray is not the biggest problem right this second. Depends on if he has other stuff he's going to bring down. Oh, as long as he's a creature, he gets 6-6. Six, six. Look at that. He had just enough to beef up his guy just... To the awesome amount. Okay, now I need it into the royal is what I need, actually. <sighs> okay, this will work. One of the few spells that would handle the 6-6 six, six at this point. This spell I can't cast. Now we're still in trouble again because of the pacifism. Let's use up all my mana. As long as he doesn't have another pacify, I should be okay. It's like he's reduced to top decking. So, we might get a chance to catch up. Can't really afford to attack when I'm this low life, though. I need an extra attacker. Okay, that's enough to start. That's okay. I'm okay with that, actually. I don't have to worry about haste too much. And the rest of these are known quantities. When I pump up the Mystic, I usually want to attack anytime I can, no matter what the board state is. I don't want to waste his extra two points of damage. Okay. I see how you are. That's okay. He's out of ammo. He's at our mercy. Excess damage means I draw a card. You're taking it, Kevin. I know you're taking it. I know you're taking it! My Basalt Ravager should be able to handle anything. This is nice. Okay, so. Do this. See what kinds of lovely things we have here. This goes into the hand. This goes into the library. Express Iteration, you are my friend! Ooh, lovely. It's 
It's mid zero. And this is just a classic case of how the deck works when it works. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. We're drawing cards left and right. Thanks to Archmage and Agar's abilities. Good game. Didn't wait around for me to decide to attack. All right, I think that's enough matches for the week. Let's go into our end game analysis here. When I get through all the pre-mades, I might put together a top 10 list and rank them. Fireworks is probably going to go up kind of high. Biolumeg. I still haven't made a deck with this guy yet. Got too soon. I'm going to write that down. Can't forget. Okay. Show me the decks. Come on. Oh, if I could add up the amount of time that I spent waiting for the server. Okay. It's down here. The one card that's invalid is Dimelic because they changed it for alchemy. But this still lets us use it. All right. I think I mentioned this at the very beginning of this series. And uh, if you missed the introduction, there should be a, an introductory card in the upper right that you can click on and you can go find it real quick. Made it easy for you. It's the lands. We've got 10 islands and 10 mountains, and that's not enough double lands for me. So if you've got any more of the pathway cards, I'd go ahead and add those in right away. And that will help uh, just fix your mana a little bit easier, a little bit faster. I don't know how much I would change for the rest of the deck. It, it does fairly well against most things. Um, usually if I'm losing to this, it's because I'm getting too few lands or I'm flooding out with lands like every other deck that I lose with. Um, I like Creative Outburst. I like Faraday's Fireball. You need it. Sometimes you need to do five points of damage to people, right? Um, I love Into the Royal for those times when they're over five and you got to get rid of them. Multiple Choice has turned out to be pretty handy so far this week, so I like having that card as well. Uh, Prismari Pledge Mage, a lot of people uh, discount. So, you know, we've got a lot of instants and sorceries in this deck. So this turns out to be a very good card in this combination. Um, same since we're doing with Wizard Tribal, Basalt Ravager is a champion winner, especially if I can get him out for the timing right. And the thing that helps out with the timing is, is when you use Expressive Iteration. And most of this games this week, I've done it the way I prefer. I save it till last. I put out everything on the field. I've used most of my existing cards, and I've had a chance to build up amount of mana so that I'm not just looking for land. That's like the cheapest. It's a very common use of the card, but it's the least effective, really. It's the least efficient. What's, what's better is if you can get a really game-changing card and have the mana to cast it later on. And that's more often what I did this week with the sample games. I think we've got just the right amount of removal for the most part. We've got three Thundering Rebukes and three Demon Re Bolts. Uh, and the Basalt Ravager, depending on how many you get, um, that's almost like three more removal cards, right? And uh, if you're worried about tokens, you still got those into the Royals. Uh, Arcane Investigator, we've got two of those. This is one where I might go down to one because I feel like if I was going to change anything, I would put one Counterspell in the deck. I feel like we're playing blue, and you have zero counter spells, and it's not like you have Lear. Uh, hang on, let me put him out so that you can see him, just in case you haven't before. We'll see if my computer's going to work properly. There's a big delay going on between what I do on my keyboard and what shows up on the. There we go, Lear, Disciple of the Drowned. Spells can't be countered, so if he was in the deck, I could understand not having. Um, counter spells. As a matter of fact, if you wanted to put somebody interesting in the deck, you could put Lear in the deck and have access to some of these, you know, Demon Bolts and Thundering Rebukes a second time. Uh, so Lear's a possible thing if you want to add in a card. Uh, but the place where probably the weakest is you've got a little 2 1 chump blocker, and, you know, you have to wait till you have six mana before you can start using his ability to draw a card. 
Um, that said, you know, the deck worked pretty well as is when, when I had a chance where I had enough land out and we had a dead spell where people were kind of like top decking. Um, I had enough, I had enough mana to pay for this and, uh, and start digging through my deck. So it's not a bad card, but I feel like strategically having just one counter spell in there would do better. So I would probably either take out an arcane investigator, put in Lear, or put in a counter spell, one or the other. And Daimalik can be awkward because you do need four to put him out. Um, you've got a lot of instants and sorceries in here to use him. And he can actually be a game winner. I mean, I was thinking about taking him out, but the fact is he is such a good card when he's out and attacking. You're able to exile an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard. And you can just cast it if you've got the mana for it. And that can really make a big difference at the right time. And what I had most of the time for when I got him out this series is I didn't even need to use that extra ability. I would just cast zero, you know, dismiss it and not cast an extra spell because usually I was tapped out already from everything else I was doing with, with what I had. So that's it. Not a lot of changes because I like it so much because I won more often than lost with it. Um, yeah, good, good job, Wizards. You know, they, they don't put together the best decks always, but um, traditionally they do a pretty good job of giving us a good sample of, of the current meta, you know, the current expansion sets. And they've got everything represented in here pretty well, I think, right? We've got Zendikar, we've got Adventures of Fallen Realms, we've got Strixhaven. Um, we, this is before the, the two recent Innistrad releases, so we didn't get additional premates from that, but we got Kaldheim represented as well. So, yeah, two thumbs up for the deck. I'm going to keep using it. Um, what would I do to prepare for a deck? like this, this is actually a good deck I would recommend to practice against if you can. If you've got a buddy and you put together a new deck, um, their, your buddy should, if, they, you know, if they've been around long enough, they'll have this deck. Um, just do a direct challenge to them. Have them punch this up. This is a very good deck to practice against because of all the flyers, right? For whatever reason, sometimes people do not take into account that you're going up against flyers. And here, how many do we have total? Let's see, we've got uh, one there with Kaza. We've got three with the Omara Mystic. And we've got two more with the Maelstrom Muse. So that's only six flyers in the entire deck. And in out of the creatures, let's see how many creatures total. 19 creatures. Six flyers out of 19 creatures total. And I can win uh, a deck I can win against an opponent easy if they haven't prepared it. If, if I got four or five people on the ground that I'm facing, uh, the fact that things like Umara Mystic are inflatable, <laughs> so to speak, that you can increase their power. Um, yeah, this is this is a well put together deck. It's a good practice deck. Uh, so if you if you want to put together a a deck that has you know it's got an, a good assortment of creatures that you're going to go against. It's got a good assortment of, fry, of flyers. And it's got um, a good assortment of removal that you have to take into account. It's got a good amount of interaction. Uh, this is a very good deck. If you can go ahead and put together something that would consistently beat this kind of deck, uh, then you know you've got a good deck. So yeah, I'd say use this as a good practice deck against. All right, that's all for this week. This was the first of the pre-made decks. Uh, Travis is going to continue to play the pre-mades next week. I'm not sure which one I'm going to choose. Maybe I'll throw darts at a dartboard, but uh, we're going to try out some of the others and see how much fun they are. If you've got a friend who's new to Magic and doesn't have a lot of experience yet, this is a good series so that they can see the decks that they're playing with, see how they work, see what weaknesses potentially they have. Like I said, a lot of the if you fix the mana and just add in more dual lands, um, you've got a lot of problems fixed already, actually, in the deck. Um, but yeah, share the link with them. Send them our way. Let them watch the videos. Remember to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time at Heeple's Corner. Uh, this is Travis saying thanks for tuning in, and have a good one.